Digital marketing seems to be the mystery that most entrepreneurs struggle with, and real estate investors are no exception. The truth is, there are multiple avenues to success. Those experiences will be best shared by the guests on this podcast. My name is Jason Wright, and I would like to welcome you to Real Estate Investor Marketing Stories. What is going on, everybody? Jason Wright here. No, we didn't give up on the podcast. I'm going to explain where we've been. Bringing episode number 25 to you. So let's get into where in the heck we've been. So earlier this year, my wife Carmen and I went down to coastal Georgia to do a little bit of exploring, a little bit of vacationing, and really liked it. We went from Amelia Island, Florida, which is in northeast Florida, Nassau County, all the way up to Savannah and even into Hilton Head, South Carolina. And we are like, yeah, this is different. This is cool. We built a business that allows us to live anywhere in the world. So what do you think about living here? So we brought the kids back down and bought a house. And for the last several months, we've been working our faces off getting the Indiana house ready to list, getting stuff purged, getting stuff sold, packing, etc. And we got probably 90 three percent of our stuff in a u-haul that we're keeping drove it down here to saint mary's georgia where i'm at now 940 miles in the big u-haul and just got the kids in school about a week and a half ago so that's going to be early august 2023 so anyways you know not having an office not having wi-fi spending every spare waking minute working on that Indiana house has taken up a lot of my time. So we've been recording podcast episodes, just haven't put any out in a while. So that's the high level of where we've been. We're not giving up. We're not quitting. We have great content we recorded. We want to share with you, but even I, even I can't be everywhere and do everything at the same time. So over the next couple episodes, I'll give you some more details kind of on that that move and the, the crazy journey that it's been. And I'll even tease you with this. It's still not over. All right, let's talk about the guest today. Uh, like I said, episode 25, uh, today's guest is a great one. It's Marshall Sykes. He's a good friend. He's a client. He's a founder of a company called Capitano Investing Group. And these are just a few things I know about Marshall. So... He's been a general partner in over 3,500 multifamily units. He's owned single-family rentals for a long time, 24, 25 years in that range there. He's an engineer by trade. He has served in the Navy. And this guy has a lot of degrees, uh, six degrees, three engineering degrees, three master's degrees. That's a lot of schooling. So uh, without further ado, let's check out our conversation. We had a great conversation, so it's time for you to uh, tune into that. Hey, Marshall, welcome to the show. Hey, Jason, it's good to see you. Thank you for having me today. Absolutely. So I don't know this story about you. Uh, I would love to hear how you got involved with real estate investing. Yeah, I mean, that's a very interesting uh, topic for me. I, I would kind of kind of uh, accidentally got into it, but uh, really it was through my family. My dad had retired from the Army, and he decided he wanted to work for himself kind of control his own destiny a little bit, his own time. And so he learned the building trade and him and my mom would build two houses at a time. Yeah. Um, and they would, I mean, they would do all the work pretty much on it, except for electrical, mechanical maybe, and maybe the roofing. But um, they would end up keeping one as a rental and selling one for, you know, to live off of and to seed money for the next uh, two so I learned that I, when I was a teenager, I would help them with that you know, on the, in the summertime and go work on the job sites. But um, more importantly, in the evening, they would talk about the business side of it when I was in the living room. And, you know, I didn't think much about it, but, you know, you hear that what's going on and they look at the numbers and all that stuff. And, and you know, fast forward some 10 years later, I decided, hey, I want to do some of this rental income. Um, that's something that I'm going to look at my future. I've all, always been about passive sources of income and having multiple sources of income. And this was a, I felt like real estate was a way to do that 
So I started getting into uh, multi uh, single family homes at that point. Very nice, very very nice. I like it. Um, so are you uh, are you focused on any certain asset classes or markets or or what are your what's your approach there? Yeah, so I you know I, I had we had a single family portfolio of ten units, but ten or so of houses. We've sold a number of those off. Um, we have around five of those still. So. I don't, not really focused on buying more single family. We've been focused on the last four years in multifamily. Yes. Um, we're investing in 10 different, a uh, partner in 10 different states. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, multifamily properties in 10 different states. And <clears throat> the markets I like, I moved back recently from Texas, from Houston to North Carolina, where I grew up. And so I'm, I'm looking at the North Carolina uh, markets. Um, I I like that. I still like Texas markets as well, and Arizona markets. So those are the kind of the three that I'm really looking at. There are, there are some other markets that I think are intriguing as well. I think Arkansas and Tennessee can also bring some um, some value as well. Yeah, I definitely hear um, Dallas, Houston, Phoenix super hot markets. Most people want a piece or have a piece of those, and I think there's just something to be said about those warmer states. You know, no one's investing in. North Dakota or Minnesota or even Montana. So definitely something to that. Um, so is single family something you have an interest on uh, in anymore at all? Or is it really just multifamily? I'm really mostly focused on multifamily. I'm focused on, you know, raising capital and, and scale. I think multifamily just provides more scalability than okay. single family. Yep. But you know, for personal, if I was going to buy my own deals and not not uh, work with investors, you know, single family does have some appeal to it. You got to buy the right. You just got to buy the right property, and I think locally it makes sense uh, versus buying out of t out of state. Would yeah. I would do that with single family? Yeah, it's uh, a lot of people that I have on this show and that I've worked with and spoke to start with single family. And I've only seen one or two that actually maintain it on a large scale as a piece of their their focus, but um, yeah, I don't uh, I don't have any interest on it based on what I know now. I think multifamily and, and stuff in that realm is the place to be for sure. So. Yeah, I haven't bought a single family rental in, in many years, over ten years. So yeah, I am really focused on multifamily. Um, I'm just trying to find the right property now for that investment. Yep, absolutely. So what simple market strategies and tactics have kind of initially allowed you to successfully attract investors to your business? I think the big thing for me is being vulnerable and getting on social media. For me, I, I liked LinkedIn yeah. because I had a big network on LinkedIn from my 30 years of experience in the, when the Navy and at Exxon Mobil, so in corporate America. So, I had a lot of, I had a big network and, you know, you put something on LinkedIn and people see that they might not respond right away. Some people do, some people don't, but they look at it and they say, oh, uh, a year later, they're like, or a year or two later, you keep going, you keep uh, that social media presence going and they start thinking, well, maybe I do want to get into real estate. So that kind of becomes a con conversation at that point. Oh yeah. Uh, it's funny what you said about, you just said something that's uh, super near dear to me this week. So I sent out an email to my list and I'll paraphrase it, but it said something like, even though you don't see the likes or comments or shares, people are always watching you and you, it, it really gets eerie. Um, I remember this has been probably five years ago. I was in the grocery store in the little town I live in and I was in an aisle talking to my wife and this girl turned around. She's like, I know you. And I was like looking at her, I looked at my wife. I was like, I don't know who you are. He's like, I know your voice. Uh, I listen to your podcast. I was like, oh, crap. Wow. Cool. And, um, you know, other times you like talk to a neighbor, they'll mention something. You're like, what? And then you're like, oh, you're watching what I'm doing because that, <laughs> that, that a few months ago. So it is interesting. I like LinkedIn. Their organic reach is a lot nicer than Facebook for sure. Uh, Facebook really wants you to pay for all the exposure. But LinkedIn is a great platform. Uh, and for what you're doing, it's, it's really my opinion, the number one place to focus. I mean, it's just, you know, YouTube can be valuable, Facebook can be valuable, but LinkedIn is really where it's at. So I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And then, you know, I've, I, when I posted, you can go back and look at a little bit of the analytics and, you know, maybe 2,000 people, 2,500 saw, saw that post, but only 50 people, like you said, they might have liked it or, and only 10 people might have commented on it. But yeah. a lot of, it still gave you a lot of exposure, you know. Yep. And if you do something long enough, eventually people, like you say, will raise their hand like, all right, I know this guy been doing this for a little while let's see what he's up to you know so right I'm, and my goal is to help others yeah. kind of get into real estate that haven't don't have that in their portfolio or they don't know much about multifamily and maybe they've done some single family rentals yeah but don't know much about multifamily and but they trust me to to give them the inside scoop on that so that's kind of where my angle is on that i like it by the way thank you for your navy service uh i take that stuff seriously you're welcome it was a pleasure to serve Awesome, man. Very cool. So um, I'm throwing a bit of a curveball here, switching gears a little bit. What would you say the biggest mistake is, the biggest re regret you have with marketing has been so far? Yeah, on the marketing side, I think my biggest mistake is I'm going to get to that this afternoon. I'm not just and wait. And then the afternoon comes, and I'm like, I don't want to do that. So yeah. I wait the next day. And that kind of snowballs after a while, right? So it's a matter of, actually doing it more consistently that's my biggest mistake yeah, yeah. i told myself i'm gonna start again next week <laughs> yeah well it's funny i was talking to a company the other day and they were telling me about their newsletter they're like oh yeah we're marketing we sit out the newsletter and i was like how often they're like once a quarter and i said I, I don't want you to take this the wrong way but you might as well not do it at all think about this if you went to the gym once a quarter would you look any different in a year they were like mm -hmm. oh you know so yeah. I think content's important. I think consistency is even more important. It really makes a big difference. So uh, same can be true with, you know, podcasts or anything you're doing with your marketing. Consistency is huge. And sometimes like the idea of doing it is way worse than just actually doing it. You know what I mean? It's like, oh man, I don't want to do that. And once you get into it, you're like, that's eh, kind of cool. It's kind of fun. So, right. I mean, it doesn't have to be a half hour thing. It doesn't have to have a every little detail around the ground it just needs to be you know it can be two minute push you know oh yeah yeah short little video or a little reel or something could be really really valuable uh can you share a story about your real estate investment journey that you haven't shared on another podcast or maybe shared publicly we're looking to get a little bit of the authentic uh unfiltered marshall here it doesn't have to be you know good bad funny it can be whatever you want to well I think uh I mean I'm I'm trying to think of single family, I'm also going to multifamily. I think uh, you know, getting in deals that maybe you thought one way and maybe somebody else said they had a different thought. The par our partner had a different thought. Yeah. And so the communication isn't is as strong as you want it to be. Yeah. And so those kind of deals are hard for me because I like the communication. I like to know what's going on. My investors want to know what's going on. Yeah. And, um, so that, that, that's kind of where I'm going with that. So now I look, I want to definitely go visit the property more often yeah. and see what's really going on. I'd be able to relay that to the investors. So for example, I went down, I was hoping to go, I had three properties in Jacksonville that I'm invested in. So I did take the trip down there and met with both my partner, my partners on one of them. And then I'm um, partners on two other properties with a different person. So I took the time and, and went for down there for a week and walked the properties and talked about it. And, and we looked at what was happening with the unit renovations. All those things helped me went to communicate back to my investors. Yep. Very nice. Now, have you ever um, checked out a property, like checked out a deck or whatever, then went and seen it and been like, no, nah, I don't want anything to do with this? <laughs> yes. So that's the other thing is the due diligence piece. So if I'm, if somebody else is finding a deal and I'm partnering with them, I want to make sure I participate in the due diligence because that for me is where I can, if I'm not, if I don't like the property, I don't get a good feel for the property or the opportunity with to, to renovate it and, and all then, and it's not just the property, it's the area that the property's in. Yeah. If I don't feel like that's a very good fit for me, it's time to say, no, I'm not going to do that property. And that has happened a couple of times yeah. where I've gone to do the due diligence and it's just not the right fit. And so 
I've not uh, participated. Mm-hmm. Yep, makes sense to me. Um, all right, so if you were speaking to uh, somebody new coming into the the capital raising game, uh, what one piece of advice would you give them in regards to their marketing? What would you say to do? Well, I think, uh, again, on that piece, uh, it, it's consistency for sure. And, but also, um, you know, you got, you, I guess, helping investors understand how real estate would help them with their pain points. I think that's the biggest thing. Are they going to invest or not? I mean, they, a lot of people know it's a good deal. And some, and may, maybe the ones, especially the ones who've already invested in real estate and done well with it. They're, but they don't want to leave their W-2 or their, their primary job because they love their job, yeah. but they also want to have some kind of investment in real estate. So those, those are a little easier. They don't have to go into the pain points necessarily, but some people are interested in it, and but they don't they don't see how it's going to benefit them besides giving them giving you $50,000 to $100,000. They're not sure that it really will double or, or whatever, but... If you talk about that pain points, what are the pain points? Do they have bad experience with the stock market? Are they looking for uh, tax depreciation or tax benefits? All those things can help with um, set, help them understand and investor understand why multifamily is a good uh, property to invest in. So here's another question kind of going along with that further. Um, do you find that there's still a lot of people out there that are uh, able to invest, uh, they may even be accredited or could be and don't even know it, don't even realize it. You find there's a lot of people out there that still don't understand how you invest in real estate. I do think, I do believe that for sure. Yep. I mean, I, when I was first, because I think back my my own journey, I've been investing in real estate for 25 years and I grew up in it like we talked yep. about. But I didn't understand syndications. I didn't understand multifamily syndications, what they were about. And so when I first got exposure to it, I was just moving back to the to Texas. I was overseas and moving back, so I kind of missed four or five years of, of the discussions on syndications. But somebody reached out to me and said that, and I'm like, "Wait, you can do that?" I did because I, I've always wanted to get in multifamily, but I didn't think you could, as an individual, get into it. Yeah. So I think there are a lot of people who have not um, don't don't understand that that you can pull up fifty to hundred investors and buy a property with the general partners doing the work while the investors, you know, just are limited partners and they don't do the work, but they just provide capital mm-hmm. with those syndications. I think it, it becomes, it becomes something you got to educate people on, but also it's, it's an easier method than you think as a, if you didn't understand um, syndications before. Yeah. We, uh, my wife and I got into our first deal as an LP last summer. And, uh, you know, there was just so much I didn't know and, uh, actually going through it, it's like, that's not that hard at all, you know? So it's, uh, you know, I, I still have friends that, uh, you know, they, they know what we're doing. We have a sister company, Wind River Equity Partners. We're raising some money for a short-term rental fund, but like people know the world I'm into, but they still don't understand it. Cause they're like, yeah, all my money's in the stock market. And, uh, I'm like, why don't you consider real estate? Like there's great tax benefits that you're not going to get in the stock market. It's not as volatile. I go into it. And they're like, yeah, but they're just like, it's like all they've ever heard of, right? They're programmed by the system in that way. And um, yeah, there's a lot of education for us all to do for sure. So, Yeah. I think when you walk an investor through the investor portal one time, they kind of, it's pretty easy, pretty yeah. intuitive on yeah. what to do. Absolutely. Oh, they understand it better. But I think the one thing that the investors the hurdle they have to get over really is, is that this is not a short term investment. It's a long term game and it's a, it's a liquid investment. So your, your money is going to be tied up for a few years. Yep. Yeah. Don't invest more than your, uh, yeah, if you need that money now, don't invest. Uh, I just told my wife, you know, assume this is gone for five years. And if we never see it again, we have to be okay with that because if you're not, then it becomes a problem. Like, I believe you shouldn't invest money you can't afford to lose. Not that I think I'm going to lose it, but if I do, it, it can't wreck my life. You know what I mean? Right, exactly. I totally agree with you on that. They, it, it has to be just like if you put it in the stock market, it could go down. Yep. And you lose $100,000 probably like I did last year, yep. you know, but you don't, it, 
your stocks are still the same, but your the money value is not the same. Now in the real estate, you, yeah, you it's possible that you could lose it, but it's the the probability is probably a lot lower than the stock market. Very nice, I like it. So we are recording this podcast uh, April twenty first, twenty twenty three. As you look forward for the rest of this year and into the fourth quarter, what are you most focused on in business? You know, I've really we've talked about on marketing. I've I've been trying to focus on more all that the first four months of this year. Yep. And I want to make sure I'm more consistent of that over the course of the year. Yep. So also, but part of that, it's not just marketing, it's just educating investors to understand it and be able to put that in my word and my own words to them so they understand it from my perspective. I think that's where I'm all, I want to focus my effort this year on that. Yeah, seems solid to me. So for anybody watching or listening, uh, if they want to get more info from you or learn more about what you're doing, how can they best do so? Yeah, my website, my company is Capitano Investing Group. So they can go to capitanoinvestinggroup.com and I have a free download there that they can we, that will provide them my top five investment criteria when I when I look at a multifamily property to invest in. You. Thank you. I'd be happy to hear from them. Hopefully they, they can get this resource and, and look at it as well. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate you coming on the show today, man. It's been fun. Yeah, Jason, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to see you again. Yep, you as well. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the show. I had a great time making it, and I hope you really enjoyed yourself listening to it. If you want to keep up with all things Real Estate Investor Marketing Stories podcast related, I encourage you strongly to go to reimarketingstories.com and signing up for our podcast newsletter. We will simply keep you up to date with what's going on with the show, new episodes, and things like that. reimarketingstories.com. So hopefully today's episode and the other episodes that you'll listen to will remind you that as a real estate investor, everybody starts at the beginning, okay? Um, our guest today and the other guests that you will hear on this show will share their real story, right? They'll tell you what worked, what didn't work. And I want you to remember one thing if you remember nothing else today. It's possible for you to, okay? Never stop going and keep following your passion. Finally, today's show has been brought to you by CapitalRaisingAutomations.com. If you're an active capital raiser, you are ready to learn the three areas that are holding you back from raising more capital, I strongly suggest you check out CapitalRaisingAutomations.com. Check out our free 10-minute video there, and you let me know if it doesn't provide you value. I'm sure it will. All right, thanks again for listening to the show this week. Hope to see you next time. Take care.